Hey craft files, welcome to another episode of So Not Scary. In this episode, we are going to look at how we can sew these adorable scrunchies using our handy dandy mini sewing machine. Yay! So the very first thing that we're going to do in order to start making our homemade scrunchies is get our fabric. Now in my hand, I've got a length of pure cotton spotty fabric, blue fabric with white spots on. And what I've done so far is I've simply cut it up. So the length of this fabric is 22 inches and the width is three and a half inches. Now you could wing this dimension. It does, it's not an exact science. So um, about two feet long or just short of two feet. Okay. And about uh, as wide as the palm of my hand. Okay. That's the width of it. So, but for those of you who like knowing exact numbers, those are the dimensions that I use 22 inches long, three and a half inches wide. Now, what are we going to do with it? The very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this fabric with the right sides facing together like so. Okay. Do you see how I'm folding it up now to make sure that it remains folded up? I'm going to go to my iron and press down on this seam. Okay. And make it nice and crisp. So let me just do that and come back to you and show you what it looks like. See you in a tick. Hey guys, I'm back and I folded my length of fabric in half and you can see the nice crisp fold that my iron managed to do on the fabric. Okay. So it's staying put. I don't have to worry about it unfolding or anything as I'm working with it. I also need to make another fold and which is folding it that way only on one side. Okay. So that's about half an inch. Okay. About that big. And once again, I'm not going to measure it or anything. As long as I know it's about that wide half an inch, maybe I'm going to fold it and press it there as well. And then I'll refold it back like so. Okay. So that's the second step we're going to do. We're going to fold it that way and then put it back into its place. Okay. So let me just do that and show you what it looks like. Hey, so I've now folded one end like we just talked about. Okay. And then I've just ironed everything back in place. And that's what the strip of fabric looks like. Easy breezy. Okay. And now what we're going to do is go to our mini sewing machine and sew all the way down this side, all the way from the top down to the bottom. Okay. And for that, I'm just going to set up my sewing machine and show you how we do that. Hey guys, I'm at my mini sewing machine now, as you can see. And I've got the folded scrunchy fabric with me now. Uh, and because the fabric is blue, I've threaded my mini sewing machine with a blue top thread. I'm sure you can see the strand there. And inside the bobbin case as well, I've placed a blue thread. So that's what we're going to be using. And now what I'm simply going to do is uh, do a nice straight stitch down one side of it. And the plan is to line uh, the edge of the fabric with the outer edge of the foot uh, of the presser foot. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Step one, I take my fabric, the presser foot is lifted up, the needle is lifted up and I'm just going to place the fabric on the edge of the presser foot and I'll lower the presser foot and lower the needle into the fabric. Okay. Now I'm going to do a couple of stitches forward, not very many, just two or three. Here we go. My speed is set to low. Okay. I like sewing on low speed on this machine. 
Here we go. That's three stitches. Now I'm going to go back over these stitches. So I lift the presser foot, turn the fabric around, making sure that the needle is still inside the fabric. Lower the presser foot again and go back over those stitches. I'm gonna sew right up to the edge. Okay, and now I'm going to lift the presser foot again and rotate the whole thing again, 180 degrees. Lower the presser foot and continue to sew a nice straight stitch. Here we go. It's incredibly easy to stay on track because I'm constantly matching the curvature, the outer curve of the presser foot with the edge of the fabric, okay? So I know I'm not going astray. So I've approached the end of the sewing and now I'm going to reverse stitch like we did earlier. So we lift the presser foot, turn the project around while the needle is still in, lower the presser foot and sew a few stitches. <coughs> lift again, turn around again, lower the presser foot and continue to sew to the end. There we go. Lift the presser foot, lift the needle out. Now that the stitch line is done, I'm now going to make a loop of thread right here after the tension disc. And now I can easily take my project out from under the presser foot. Okay, I do that and I snip the thread off and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so our fabric is now stitched up. As you can see in the beginning, we did a reverse stitch to really lock the threads in place. What I'm going to do is knot these threads together with a double knot, okay, these two initial threads. And I'm going to do the same on the opposite end of the project as well. I'm going to knot these end threads, snip off the excess and get back to you. Hey guys, I'm back and behind the scenes what I did is I knotted the end threads and snipped off the extra thread on both sides of our fabric tube, okay? Now what we have to do is turn this tube right side out, okay, to make the scrunchie. Now how do we do that? The best thing to use is to use a safety pin. I hope you can see this. I've got this ginormous safety pin. It's an ugly old thing, but it will do the job just fine. So typically try to get the largest safety pin you can find, okay? And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take one end of our tube and open up the safety pin and pin it to one end of the tube, like so. Okay, can you see it? It's just pinned up. There we go. Okay, now we're going to shove this safety pin inside the tube and start scrunching the fabric over the pin. And the pin is going to guide us folding and rolling the fabric back over onto itself. It feels a bit awkward when you first start doing it, but once you get into a rhythm, it just um, goes along very quickly. And there I've got the end of the safety pin out. I'm just going to grab it 
gently scrunch back the fabric until I can find the right side fabric. There it is, see? It's come out. I'm going to hold on to it and now I'm going to start scrunching the whole thing back onto itself and just like that and the whole tube is going to um, uncurl and straighten up. Yay! It's done! There we go. It's turned right side out perfectly. I can now remove the safety pin like so and now I'm going to iron this whole tube out nice and flat, okay? So let me get back to you and show you what that looks like. See you in a tick. So behind the scenes what I did is I simply ironed the tube out nice and flat. So can you see how neat and tidy it looks now? Okay. Now on one side you can see we folded one edge in so it's nice and finished on one side and the other side is still a raw edge, okay? The next step in making our scrunchie is to just put an elastic inside this tube. Now for that, here I've got a length of elastic. The thickness of this elastic or the width of this elastic is half an inch and lengthwise it's nine inches long, okay? Now, typically uh, we use this width of elastic because it's perfectly suitable for making scrunchies. Anything too wide and it's just not gonna be comfortable to put around your hair and anything too thin is not going to be robust enough to hold the fabric and your hair together, okay? So half an inch width of elastic is just the right thickness to make scrunchies, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that uh, big safety pin again and this time I'm going to insert it in one corner of the elastic, okay? There, it went through and I'm going to clip it closed, okay? Now I'm going to thread this through our tube. So here I've got the tube, I'm going to start putting this through okay and I have to be careful not to let the uh, elastic run away inside so I'm gonna hold on to the other end okay here we go here we go we found the other end so both the ends are out now I'm going to take the safety pin off come on here we go, get rid of that. And I'm gonna knot the ends together as tightly as possible. So I stretch it out, wrap it around two fingers, make a loop, pull the ends through, okay? And pull tight, 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 as tightly as possible. There, that's knotted up, okay? Now I'm going to hide this knot inside the tube. So I'm going to pull on one side and shift and tuck it inside. It's disappeared inside, okay? For the last step, what we have to do is tuck the um, raw edge of the fabric inside the finished edge of the fabric, okay? So we put one end of the tube inside the other. There, that's tucked in. <clears throat> Last step, we're going to sew a nice straight line. So a nice straight line over this fold, holding everything together. Okay, so we're going to go back to the sewing machine and do that. See you in a bit. So we're back at our mini sewing machine and now I'm going to go. So I'm going to go back and forth over that fold with a straight stitch a couple of times. Here we go. So 
So I'm going to lift the presser foot, turn the project around, lower it, and go over that stitch line again. Lift the presser foot, oops, and make a loop here. There we go. And remove the whole project and snip the thread. Okay, and it's done. Look how cute that looks. Okay. It's all stitched up, stretches beautifully. It will sit very comfortably around your hair, okay? And you can make loads of these in a very short amount of time using only scrap fabric. So that's how you make scrunchies using your mini sewing machine. If you found this video helpful, please do keep, give it a thumbs up. It, it'll really help me out. And also please do subscribe to my channel, click the bell icon, and do check out my blog. It's called unicrafts.com and I keep posting new easy sewing projects for craft files like yourselves. See you in the next video. Happy crafting. Bye!